Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. It is Piper's Pit with mm -hmm. a special presentation. And Roddy brings out Jack Tunney, who has... There's a trophy there taller than one of them. And Tunney has a long proclamation about three years ago this week. You captured the WWF belt in a memorable battle. You're one of the great athletes in the histories of sports, history of sports. You have raised wrestling to heights never before seen. A patriotic citizen loved by men, women, and children. You are the most recognizable star in the entire world. We salute you on the third anniversary of your reign, Hulk Hogan. Hulkster comes out. Everyone just goes crazy. They show, just to bring this whole thing full circle, the night Hogan won the title. And who is there to pour champagne over his head but his best friend, Andre the Giant. Hogan is flattered. Says this reward is unbelievable. It's as great as when he won this title, for, won this world title. Andre then comes out the door, and this is why they introduced him earlier in the show. Just so the crowd knew he was there, and he would get his monster ovation then. And uh, they wouldn't have this. You know, there's a reason he was there. He didn't just pop out to uh, crash this Piper Spit segment. R uh, Roddy, who by the way has hated these guys forever, but he's very excited now. Hulk Hogan's best friend, Andre the Giant. I'm sure you're here for congratulations. I'm sure you have something to say. And Andre eyeballs this trophy. And he simply says, three years to be a champion. That's a long time. And he shakes Hogan's hand. But it's a very stiff handshake. Sure is. And Hogan's eyes bug out. His, his brow furrows. He freezes. And Andre lets go. He leaves. Hulk's like, that was weird, but I got a trophy. He's all happy. Yeah, Hogan Hogan was actually phenomenal here because he did the bug eyes and then when Andre let go, he like he laughed it off. Ha <laughs> guy's got a goddamn good handshake there, brother, and he holds up his thing and everything like that. And uh, you know, this was this was really good. But then they go back for the next match, and Bobby Heenan, who never talks about Andre, every time it's brought up, he ignores it, he blows it off, he talks about something else. He's outraged. How could they give a trophy to Hulk Hogan for three paltry years as champion? Andre the Giant hasn't been defeated in 15 years. 15 years! Don't you think that guy deserves a trophy? He's totally, like, he's all in on, on campaigning for Andre yeah. as the deserving man to get this, this trophy and not Hulk Hogan. And I was like, man, you know, they went zero to 60. <laughs> they went zero to 60 on this angle. He is sickened by this display, Bobby Heenan is. Andre is no friend of mine, he's sure to clarify. But they haven't done a thing for Andre the Giant. Nothing. Zip! So the match that's going on as he's ranting is the Dream Team and Dino Bravo versus Hillbilly Jim and Pedro Morales and Tito Santana. Doing this match, Dino Bravo gets absolutely lost <laughs> needed like four maps and a GPS to get back on track. And it's not like the spot they were doing was Osprey and Ricochet. Or Kalani and uh, Sol Ruka for that matter. Oh boy. So Tito gets the forearm on Brutus Beefcake. His finish. Lays across this dude to make a cover. And the ref drops down and he counts one and he counts two and he stops. And I thought, oh shit, did Tito knock Brutus Beefcake out and the ref stopped here? Oh no, that's Danny Davis. Yes. He's being a heel ref. Okay. So the match goes on for a while, but he fucks the baby faces two or three more times, and they say, screw this. Yeah. And they cut a promo saying, "This is not, we're going to stand here and be embarrassed. We'll, fight, we'll get back when there's a real referee. And they walk out, and they lose by countout. I actually thought this was great. Yeah. Because you, you, they've been building this up for months and months and months, and finally, you know, he's blatantly not counting when the baby faces have a pin, and they all just stood up for themselves. And they were like, fuck this. We're not going to be a part of this. We're out of here. And, you know, nowadays they do heel ref stuff in all these promotions. And the baby faces never do this. They just tolerate it and they get mad. And, you know, they do some angle to end up getting to a finish or whatever. But you never see the baby faces just standing up for themselves and just walking out. And back then, you know, the idea was they're walking out. They're taking an L and they're not getting the winner's purse. Like, they played it up like it was a really big deal that they made. They took a stand for themselves. And, you know, it's good because, you know, in storyline, okay, you know, the guy's been questionable and, and, you know, people have said they don't think he should do it and they've interviewed other referees or whatever. But, you know, what, what has happened so far where Jack Tunney needs to take a stand? Well, now wrestlers are walking out when he's refereeing. 
So I liked I liked this little addition to the storyline here. I thought it made the baby faces look like uh, stand up guys, not standing up for this shit. Mania three is still coming. For those of you curious, Tony Nardo versus George Steele. Excuse me, did you say Tony Nardo? Tony mm-hmm. Nardo. Okay. You know you can pick your name in wrestling. Pick anything you want. It's that's his real name, Anthony Nardo. That's I don't know if it makes it any better. Well, <laughs> you see, you can get a different name. Yeah. <laughs> when you're well, he was he was Moon Dog Spot. Not really. No way. Yeah, I found his uh, Tony Nardo. I can't. Yeah, it. there's no way George Steele got Moon Dog Spot up in a flying chicken wing. <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 in denial. Yeah, Nardo died, and there was a, a long bio on his like funeral obituary. In memory of Tony Nardo, Moon Dog Spot. Yeah. Wow. That's right. We talked about that. Wow. Unrecognizable here. George Steele was strong. All that happened here was George cheated, tore some turnbuckles, hit one flying chicken wing, but couldn't hold him up because he's very big after all. Got him up with another flying chicken wing, and Tony Nardo quit, and that was that. Your main event. That was the main event. I don't think he... Uh, That's a cool finish, though. I don't think he couldn't hold him I up. I think the ref messed up. I think the ref just... That's you know, possible, too. Yeah. You know, Verbal you know. submission. I'm blown away by this Tony Nardo Moondock spot revelation. That's a big dude. That's a big dude. Right. Um, main event promo interview. Resnick interviewing the number one contender to Hulk Hogan, the Ugandan headhunter Kamala. Accompanied by From the north slopes of uh, Kilimanjaro. That's right. But kind of Kimchi and, of course, the wizard. And I just don't have the energy in me to do the entire <laughs> wizard promo. Now I got children sleeping. Uh, there, there, I, will, I will tone it down. I apologize, listeners, but it's the best I can do in this, under the circumstances. <laughs> but I will say at the end... There was a point where he completely lost his train of thought, and so he just started screaming. <laughs> it's happened sometimes. <laughs> Kamala was lost, too, just spinning around. That's all Kamala does. That's all every Kamala. I mean, wailing. Every wrestler outside of Hulk Hogan has felt the sensation of being literally crushed by this man. Body after body has the giant Kamala. Ah! <laughs> That's how it ended. When he gets going and he starts really yelling and he starts really bearing down, I'm waiting for one of his gig marks to just open up and start pouring blood. <laughs> it's entirely possible. So next week, we have the Junkyard Dog, the debut of Demolition, at least on Challenge, the Ugandan Headhunter Kamala, Jacques Rougeau versus Don Morocco, and Ricky Steamboat returns, and then the show ends. And there is no musical review, and you may think that would make me upset. However, what the show ended with was a freeze frame of the Andre the Giant Hulk Hogan handshake, and Hulk looking up at his friend, helpless, confused, hurt both physically and emotionally. Mm -hmm. This was beautiful. It was an awesome ending to the show. Yeah. So I'm looking at a picture of Kilimanjaro, and it's, (laughs) it's like covered in ice. Yeah. So he runs around naked? No, no, he's on the north side where the sun's out. <laughs> Actually, you're not wrong. No. <laughs> Stop. Northern it's ridiculous. Slopes of- Why is he from the northern slopes of Kilimanjaro? <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> southern slopes are very un- 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 inhospitable. Less food. I was disappointed in this show because last week they had promised the uh, musical review. Mm-hmm. Everybody have fun tonight. That's, That's true. Right. So there was no they Wang Chung yeah. this week. Dude, yeah. I Which think was- if... I, I raced it, but I think if you check the card they advertised last week, absolutely nothing happened. Oh, perfect. And then the card they advertised this week, they advertised one match, it didn't happen. <laughs> so I don't know what to tell you. Fuck, the northern side should be colder. It's further north. It was just a joke, Brian. It's ridiculous. Well, wait, is it, is it, hang on. Uh, is, it's got to be south of the equator, isn't it? Literally, there's a place on it called the Kilimanjaro Northern Ice Field. Well, okay, you got me there. <laughs> With they're, glaciers. They're in Tanzania. Tanzania. Or Africa. It was just a dumb joke by a dumb He guy. lived in, in, in on a glacier wearing no clothes. Next to Kenya. Okay, they're they're right on the equator, but just just south of it, so the northern slopes would be warmer. Okay. It's just a joke. Well, why is there ice everywhere? It's warmer in the summer. It's high. I see. <laughs> but he lives there. It is very high. So he lives there in the winter too? Well you what you're seeing is a traveling year. <laughs> okay, we're out of here, everybody. Listen. <laughs> Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? 
Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.